How's it going everybody? My name is Connor Moriarty and today we're back in the studio for yet another product photo shoot. Let's do it. So yesterday I went out and I bought this beautiful bottle of Grey Goose Vodka. Now I originally had a shoot planned for today, but that ended up getting canceled. So I figured I'd come into the studio anyways and utilize this bottle before I cracked it open. So today I'm just going to be showing you a really quick, really simple light setup for a real transparent bottle just like this one. I know the last product photo shoot I did was a bottle as well, but this one's really cool and it's a really nice bottle. So I figured I just had to shoot it and I figured I'd take you guys along with me. But I have some more really cool ideas for some more product photo shoot tutorials in the future, so stay tuned for those. Also, really quickly before we get started, I just wanted to welcome all the new subscribers to the channel. We've had a ton of new subscribers since my last video, so welcome to all of you. Also, for those of you who have been here for a while, I'm sorry for the lack of videos lately. I've been really busy, but I have some really cool idea for some more videos in the future, so please stay tuned. Alright, so for those of you who tuned in to the last video, we're using pretty much all the same equipment as we did in the last one. Up here on the tripod, or the stand, we got my Canon 5D Mark III with my 100mm macro 2.8 lens, uh, Canon by the way, and a pocket wizard triggering, triggering the lights, and all of that is running up to my computer where I'm running Capture One software so I can see all my photos up here on the big screen. Now behind me, I have a super simple setup. You guys are gonna love this. All it is is a white piece of Plex that the bottle is sitting on and another white piece of Plex as the background. As far as the light setup goes, it's a really simple one light setup. As of right now, we might pull in the second light later, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, straight behind the setup I have here is one light. It's a pro photo head with a Fresnel uh, modifier on it. Now what that modifier does, it's so cool, it's one of my favorite modifiers. It softens the light, but it also gives you a spotlight effect that you can adjust, kind of like an aperture setting, and that allows us to adjust the size of the spotlight that's illuminating from behind this bottle, and it allows us to control the light output as well as the size of the light spotlight we're getting. So it's a really useful modifier. I think it's going to come really in handy for the shot here. Oh, and also on that light back there, I have a blue gel hanging in front of it, just so we can have an overall blue cast, a blue color cast throughout the entire photo. I think that's going to beautifully match the colors of the bottle and light up the bottle really well. Other than that, all we have are a couple bouncing black cards. Um, these are just on either side to kind of give a dark rim to the entire bottle. As we start taking photos, you can kind of see what that's doing. But that's it, and I think we're ready to get shooting. Alright, so that looked awesome. As you guys can see by the photos popping up on your screen, you can kind of get an idea of what I'm going for with this shot. I want the overall shot to be pretty bright and lively, but I also wanted a natural vignette around it to kind of draw in the eye and make the product the hero of the shot. And that, that's where that Fresno light modifier comes in, because it's giving us that beautiful spotlight, it's creating a natural vignette around it, and it just draws your eyes in, and it keeps the bottle itself bright and lively, but it also gives us that vignette that I wanted. Our blackboards here are giving us nice, beautiful shadows along the sides of the bottles. And I think our backlight here is a perfect, perfect example of why shooting the light from behind when it comes to clear bottles is just by far the best way to photograph a bottle like this. As the light comes from behind and shoots through the bottle and gets to the camera, it just makes the bottle explode with light. It looks fantastic. It brings out all the text, all the writing, all the colors, and it just looks absolutely fantastic. Now one thing wrong with this shot that you guys can probably clearly tell is that the labels themselves are completely dark. There's no information there, it's all in shadow, and that makes total sense. We're backlighting this bottle, the glass is going to be beautifully illuminated, but these opaque ob objects like the top, of the, um, the top label in the bottle and the label that goes across the body, there's no way those are illuminated. There's no light source coming from the front that will bounce off those opaque objects. Because of that, I don't really think that something like this, a whiteboard, I don't think this would work very well if we just held it in front and bounced light back in. I don't think that would be quite enough light. So I think we will actually need to bring in just one more light uh, and light from the front. So give me one second. Alright, so what I just did is I took a soft box here, I just put it directly behind the camera, and I'm shooting it directly at the bottle. And my goal here is just to use this light source 
to uh, effectively light the top of the bottle, the label, and then the body label. Um, I think this will do a perfect job. Let's see how it looks. Wow, okay, that did a fantastic job. As you guys can see by the photos popping up on your screen, uh, the label itself completely illuminated. It looks fantastic. It looks totally different. Uh, the Grey Goose text completely exploded with light. The mountain label, the geese, all of that. It's so much more lively now. It's not in shadow anymore. Same thing with the neck label. That's exactly what I wanted. Now, as we all probably could have expected, when we added this light from the front to light the front of the bottle, that's going to completely ruin the back lighting that we established first. I don't really think there's much of a way to avoid this. I think we have such a big light source here hitting the front of the bottle that there's no way to be quite precise enough to only light for the labels, and that's totally fine. That just means we'll probably need to do a composite um, and take that initial shot where we have the only backlit part of the bottle and composite in the second shot, and we will only composite in the labels. And I think once we do that, the whole bottle will come to life and be one cohesive shot. But the final thing I'm noticing with this shot is that the neck label itself, that didn't photograph too well. I think the neck label is a little bit more glossy and you can see that horrible harsh highlight running down the center of the, uh, the, center of the label. I do not like that, I don't want that. So we're probably gonna need to take just one more shot and add a third shot to our composite. That won't be too hard. These are really easy composites and I'm gonna walk you through all this towards the end of the video. Now all I just did is I took this soft box that was behind the camera shooting the front of the bottle and I just moved it to the left side of the bottle to illuminate that left side of the label and give us a better light across the label itself. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, so like I expected, it lit the label perfectly, it looks fine, but it's still a little too hot for my taste. There are tons of hot spots and highlights that I don't really like, so I think that's a pretty easy fix. Right here, I just have a white flag, and all this is going to do is add one more layer of diffusion to the light that we're shining at the bottle. I'm just going to hold this directly in front of the softbox, take a photo, and hopefully that'll diffuse the light on the neck label and give us the shot we're looking for. I definitely think that's a lot more what I'm looking for. When I held this up, it just softened those hot spots a lot and it gave us a beautiful gradient around the left side of the bottle. I do want to fill in the right side just a tiny bit more, so I'm just going to take a white card, put it on the right side of the bottle, and hopefully when I take one more shot, it'll just do a great job at bouncing a little bit more light into the right side of the bottle, filling in those shadows. As you guys can see, we just filled in that right side of the bottle a tiny bit. There's still that beautiful gradient that wraps around it, but that right side of the bottle is not in so many shadows as it was before. So that looks really good. I think we have the three shots we need. We lit for um, the main shot, which is just backlighting the bottle, illuminating the bottle, giving us a beautiful vignette image that we're looking for. Our second image, we just lit from the front to light the body label, illuminate that as much as we can. And then the third shot, we just brought this light box to the left, held a little diffusion panel up and a bounce guard, and that filled in the neck label beautifully, giving us a nice gradient across the whole thing. So with those three images, I think we're ready to hop into Photoshop, piece them together, and I even have a surprise for you guys that'll really, quite literally, make this shot explode. So come with me, you don't want to miss it. Alright, so we're over here in Photoshop and I've gone ahead and I've taken the three images that we took and brought them over here into Photoshop so we can start to work on them. Now I've already gone ahead and completely edited and composited our final image, so I'm not going to go through a super long comprehensive edit, I don't want this to turn into a 45 minute video. So as you can see here in my layers on the right, I've kind of just broken them down into categories and um, I'll turn on each layer as I go and explain as I did, so hopefully you guys can understand it as, um, you know, as clear as possible. So the first thing I, I obviously took care of was the composite. So I went ahead and I brought in all three of our photos. This is the first one we took. You see here 
Um, and this first one is the one where we gave ourselves this beautiful uh, vignette background, a nice bright center to the shot, a beautifully illuminated bottle, but of course the labels themselves were pretty dark in shadow. So if I turn on the second layer here, you can see, boom, that body label, it, it immediately comes to life. I can toggle it on and off like that, and you can see what a difference that made. And basically all I did was I just masked in the body label only from the second shot that we took. Remember the second shot, we took the softbox and we pointed it at the front of the bottle just to illuminate this completely. So you can see when we combined our first shot where we have this beautiful background lighting with the second shot where we lit for the uh, bottle label, it just all comes together and all comes to life and looks fantastic. Now finally I'll turn on the last shot, the third shot, and as you can see, that just brings in the top label. And this is again the third shot we did where we lit for the top label only and as you can see we have this beautiful gradient up here and I'll turn it on and off again more. And that just looks great. We completely brought in the label. We gave a nice gradient across the whole thing. It's beautifully lit. I really like how that turned out. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and close this composite group. And I'm going to go ahead and open this next group that I've labeled edits. And obviously here is where I made lots of the main edits to the photo. Now this first layer here I've called clone because I went ahead and I removed certain things in the photo that I didn't want. Some things I could think of right off the bat was I didn't want these lines where you could see the back of the surface showing up here and here. I didn't want the dirtiness in the table down here. I had some other dirtiness in the background showing up up there. So I wanted to get rid of all that. So if I turn this layer on, you can see all of that stuff disappears. I'll keep turning that on and off just so you can see the difference it's making. So I think that added a lot to the shot. It just made it look super, super clean and crisp and just well put together. Next up, I have a dodge and burn layer where I also did a tiny bit of sharpening, but not much. Um, you guys know what dodging and burning is, just lightening and darkening certain parts of the photo. So if I turn that on and off, you can just see the whole photo becomes a lot more dramatic. I think I kind of uh, increased the effect of the vignette around the image. I also brightened up the center of the image. And then I went in and I dodged and burned certain parts of the bottle to really make them pop. I'll zoom in on certain parts so you can see it. So down here, if I turn it on and off, you can see just the shadows become deeper, the highlights become brighter, the label becomes crisper. And if I move up, the neck is where I really like the dodging and burning that I did. The contrast in the shadows and highlights of the neck of the bottle just really come to life once you do just a little bit of editing to it. I really like how that turned out. Finally, I did what's called a high pass layer. Now, if you guys don't know what high pass is, it's kind of confusing stuff. I'd go ahead and watch another video on it or maybe wait for me to make one in the future. I'm definitely not going to explain it all now. But it's just a cool way of editing. A lot of the time, uh, portrait photographers use it to edit skin tones. I went ahead up here and I used it on the neck label just to blend some of the differences in um, textures and highlights and shadows. So if I turn that on and off, you can just see it a little bit, how it changed. It got a little brighter and overall those tones just blended together a lot easier. Again, I'm not going to explain exactly what that's doing, but that's just my thought process. I went ahead and I blended some of those tones up there in the neck. Okay, finally, you guys can see this third grouping I have right here, and I teased at the end of the photo shoot that I might have a special surprise in store for you guys. So I definitely like this shot. I think it looks fantastic as it is, but I thought we could add a little bit more to it, or a lot more to it, just to make it that much more cool. I think there are just certain things that we can do to this shot to take it from just an average product shot and turn it into a high-end conceptual advertisement that you could see in a magazine or something. So with that thought in mind, I'll show you guys what I did. If I turn on this first layer here, here in the photo you can see there's a little goose head. The way I photographed this bottle, you just can't really tell what it was, so I went ahead and I took that out. Uh, it'll make more sense to you guys why I took that out when I when I show you what else I did, because that you're not even going to be able to see this when you see what else I did to this shot. Anyways, I thought of all the cool things that I could do with this shot. I thought of explosions, fire, all that kind of stuff. But when it came down to it, I saw the beautiful blue tones we had going, and I just wanted to continue that. So I thought, 
what's blue, what could give the shot a lot of movement, a lot of badassness. Yes, that's a word. I made it up. Don't judge. And of course, I thought of water. I thought of if we could make this a really cool water conceptual shot, I think it'll just make take this completely to the next level. So I brought, brought in some certain images. I brought in this image here, as well as this one. I brought in a water surface and some ripples. So I think the first layer I have, I utilized uh, this water surface. So I'll come back here and I'll turn it on. Yeah, it is the first one. So I, as I turn it on and off, you can see, I basically transformed the white plex surface that we had during our shoot and I made it into a beautiful, crisp water surface. Now, all I did was I, um, I brought in the image, I put it over top our bottle, I masked out the areas where the bottle is, so you can only see around here, and I lowered the opacity a little bit, just so that, I think I lowered it, yeah, to 14, so I lowered the opacity quite a bit, just so that it wasn't as predominant as in your face. If it was at 100%, it would look like that, and that does not look good. So I kept it at 14, and I think that looks really, really cool. Also, down here, I did a little bit of uh, motion blur to, this, uh, to the logo, to the reflection in the logo. I did this so that it would make a little bit more sense, look a little bit more real realistic as it was reflected through the water. This next layer, I took not this shot, I took this one, the ripples, and I wanted to put that in. So as I turn it on, you can see, boom, the ripples show up in the shot. I'll turn that on and off a little bit. Now, same thing as the last one, all I did was I brought this image on top of my original image and I masked out the certain areas where I didn't want it to show up, like behind the bottle, for example. And as we can zoom out and look at it and we turn this on and off, you can just see that adds a lot to the shot as well but this ripple is gonna make a lot more sense when I show you the other layers that I did. Now I'm gonna go kind of out of order with my layers here just because I wanna show you them in an order different than how I worked on them. So I'm gonna go up here and turn on this one and boom. This is a great start to the photo. Those ripples make a lot more sense now and basically all I did was I took this shot here, brought it in and if I go over the layer you can see that my blending mode is on darken and basically all that did was it took this white background that was on the original shot and it blended it in so that it didn't appear anymore and it was just the water that's a really cool blending option um, i definitely think it comes in handy quite a bit if you're pulling images from the internet that have a white background and just like all the other shots all the other composites that i have done with the water so far all i did was i brought it in put it over top of my shot I masked out the uh, the return on the water so that obviously it looks like it's curving around the bottle and I did a bit of a little bit of blurring on the text on the bottle just so that again it makes sense um, you don't want the writing to be completely clear and crisp if you're looking at it through a ton of water so that just adds to the real realism finally I took this image here just this one single water image, and I use that in a bunch of different ways to just take the shot to a complete different level. And I'll just turn them on all at once, boom, 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 boom. And look at that, guys. Look how cool that I'm. I'm so happy with this. I get so excited just when I look at it. Basically, same thing that I did with all the other water layers. I just took this that same image, uh, turn the blending mode, up, mode onto darken so that the white background disappeared and blended in with the shot. And I just rotated it. I flipped it on different axes, axes, whatever it is. And I wrapped it around the bottle. I masked it certain ways. So, you know, I'll turn, oh, I already turned that one on and off. So if I turn that one on and off, you can see what's happening. I just masked in those certain areas, wrapping around the bottle. Same with this one coming out from behind this one coming over the top, and this one just to add a little bit more flair to the shot. Overall, it really wasn't that hard. It was just taking an image, putting it in the shot, lining it up the way you want it, and just masking out the areas where you didn't want it to show up. And then all that does is make it look like the water is either coming from behind or wrapping around the bottle or whatever it might be. I love how this turned out, guys. I think this water took the entire shot to a whole nother level. I think it looks super crisp, super conceptual. I could see it in a magazine, but we're not done yet. 
So as you can see by this next layer titled color balance, you probably won't be able to see much when I turn it on and off. Basically all this is doing is these different water layers that I brought in, they were all different shades of blue. Some were more turquoise, some were more aqua. So I took this color layer and I just evened everything out a little bit more just so that the water looked a little bit more believable in the shot. And in general, by the way, as I worked, I made sure that I edited the water before it came in just a little bit so it all matched as much as possible. For example, if I go back to this one, you can tell that this shot originally looked a lot more aqua than it's showing up here. And that's because I just changed the color cast of the blue a little bit. Same with this one, this was very turquoise and I didn't want it to be that way. So I made it a little more aqua so it blended in with everything a lot better. And finally, just to put the icing on top, turn on this last layer, boom, the Grey Goose logo. All I did was I took their logo with a, uh, with a transparent background um, and I put bevel and emboss on it just to give it a little bit more dimension. You can do that in the effects panel right here in blending options. And I think, I mean, the shot was pretty good. I loved it when it just looked like this, but there's something about putting the logo on the image that just makes it look so much more professional. Like you could just be flipping through a magazine and this would pop up, or you could be on their website and this would pop up. But anyways, that's it guys. This is the final photo that I ended up with. I might tweak it a little bit more if I, when I look at it tomorrow or something, but for the most part, I am crazy excited about how this turned out. I think it looks so, so cool. I'm super excited how it turned out. You know, this original shot here, this looks fantastic. I think we could have been done with this, but just to take it to the next level, to have some fun with it, I thought it was a lot of, I thought it was so cool that we just had some fun and brought in this water here and just took it to a whole nother level. I hope you guys like how it turned out, and I hope this tutorial made a little bit of sense to you guys. Please, 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 if you have any questions or if I missed anything or if anything I said wasn't clear, please leave a comment down below. As you guys can tell by my previous videos, I respond to every single person who comments on the video, so leave a comment. I'll for sure answer it as soon as I can. I just want to make sure that you guys fully understand everything I explained here, and I probably missed a thing or two, so please ask a question if you have it. Anyways, I won't take up any more of your guys' time. Thanks so much for tuning in to another video. It would be absolutely fantastic if you could hit that like button down below. Maybe even hit that subscribe button if you're new and you like the video. So yeah, go out there, take this technique, apply it to your own bottle, and let me know how it goes. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.